Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody feeling? Good. Feeling good. How about you? Does anybody ask you, how's Brian today? You know, I, that's much appreciated. <laughs> it's been a long weekend. Uh, St. Patty's Day was Friday. Uh, it's also my wife's birthday on Friday. Um, so do a, do a pretty big party. I had almost 50 people at the house uh, until about midnight on Friday night and uh, cleaned up all day Saturday and then had people over again on Saturday. Uh, wasn't expecting that, but um, I also surprised my wife with a, a puppy. Uh, so Ooh. have been um, trying to acclimate a new dog into the house. Um, yeah. On top of having company, so yeah, it's been a it's been a weekend for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, for you. So. What type of puppy? Uh, it's a toy poodle. It's oh, a okay. Golden, uh, Those are awesome. A golden doodle? No, it's a, it's a oh. toy, toy poodle. He's brown, um, but he's pure toy poodle. Nice. Um, Good yeah, for so you. Our last dog was a toy poodle. We had to put him down a few months ago, so uh, we thought it was kind of time for a little man to have another, another play buddy. So That's it's good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Is so the puppy good. crate trained and sleeping through the night kind of deal, or is he? He's, he's seventeen months old. So we rescued him. Um, not potty trained perfectly for a seventeen month old, but that's kind of why he needed to be. Uh, taken out of his current environment, but he does okay. Um, he walks very well on a leash and is using the bathroom outside. And um, for the most part, at, overnight, he sleeps not not in a crate. We just have him kind of locked in like our, um, when you first come in the, the garage area, fenced off and he has a pee pad there and he does pretty well with it. So um, it's going, going okay. Um, That's exciting, good for you. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so you're the open house. Uh, thank you for doing that. So that went that fairly well. You said you, I think you had three, three people come through. Yeah, three people came through. Um, well, the first couple was like more interested in the furniture and the pictures. They're like, where's that? We really want to see it. And I was like, you know, this is how the house is being shown right now. And yeah, yeah, it was a little odd. Um, but the, the lady, she, Right now she's looking for a place. Um, her and her husband are getting separated. And so she's looking for her own place. But they had like property management companies that she um that they own and stuff. She really liked the house because she used to do that kind of painting years ago. And so she understands like how much work and how like how much effort is put into it and stuff. So she was really appreciative of the house. And she has kids that are in college, so she's kind of like empty nester. It seemed yeah, like it would be a really good fit for her. Um, yeah, but she's working with an agent and she was just, but yeah, there's a lot of things about the house that she was really, she stayed there for a while and just like enjoyed the house. Good. Yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had several people that have been there like an hour plus. I mean, just yeah, a long, a long time. So that's, that's good. And I'm not sure if it's that one or not. It might be, but her agent and her agent's assistant been reaching out to me about the HOA information and about a couple other things. So um Maybe hopefully we get an offer from that. That would be yeah, that'd be great. She's she's definitely one because the house is so uniquely made, as in like it only has two bedrooms and just how it's set up that it seemed like it would be a good fit for her season in life, you know? Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate you doing that. The first people that were just mainly interested in the furniture, were they were they a potential buyer for you? They were I'll reach out to them again today. They were really hard to like connect with. I couldn't really tell. They they were they were polite, but they weren't very like. They were just really hard to engage. I wasn't sure what motive they had. Like, are you looking to buy? Just uh, do you like the area? Like, what exactly are you looking for? And it was just like very right yes or no answers and like they were very either reserved or something she was talking more about her mom than anything else <laughs> it was like my yeah, mom would is, love this, I would, so I, would, this kind of I would definitely follow up with her today it's nice to meet you and and sometimes yeah. maybe even just sending them another property like yeah like, well, me, I, hey, this, this one's actually available in the area like it's maybe not similar but like you know yeah, whatever no, just I, get them I'll definitely reach out to her, uh, to them and, and just, yeah, just like, Hey, just wanted to see if there's anything else that's interesting to you guys. It just made me seem like they probably bought a house recently 
and they're trying to furnish it <laughs> and they're more looking of like an estate sale because right. of the, all the furniture that was in the house that's what like i kind of was trying to process afterwards um and they didn't want to bring that up like oh we just came here to see if any of the furniture was available and right. that was it we weren't really looking to yeah. buy a house um yeah because of all the people who have come through it so far no one no one has wanted the furniture there i, I was like wanted to kind of see it empty so most people have been very excited to see it like it is because yeah. you can really kind of put your own feel on it but um yeah, so we're good is, yeah. but there is the third couple they are starting the process of looking but mm -hmm. there's like a family agent that they feel like they have to be working th with they haven't signed right. with them and they haven't even voiced that agent that they're looking to buy or anything but they feel like if they don't buy or sell with that agent then there's going to be problems Beef. so yeah well you know, again, it's one of those things I'd be proactive and send them some other things and, you know, just. Yeah, well, they yeah. I, I definitely got a lot of information of what their kind of season in life is and what they're looking for. So I wanted to look through and see some of the houses and be like, hey, this is available. Um, just wanted and then kind of give them like, OK, I was thinking, <laughs> of saying, since you're just starting the process, this is what I would do, you know, like. If your house, if you own a house, then, you know, really consider listing it because mm -hmm. that's going to make your offer more presentable and more solid, um, higher chance of it being accepted. And then if you're not pre-approved yet, that's something that I would do too. So you actually know what your budget is and, um, and go from there kind of like if you need somebody, but be like proactive in that. Like, yeah, and, that, and that's, and that's good. I mean, and also, you know, if they have a family friend and they have a house to sell, then, you know you can help them on the buy side and maybe the family friend can help them on the other side or, yeah. or vice versa. So, um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely send that there, the first and the third person, some, some other properties and just kind of just throw some stuff out there. And they'll either say, yeah, we like that. That's not our style. We want something different, but either way that kind of engages you. So yeah, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. If you have other houses for open houses, I'll be happy to do an open house again. You've had, you've had, you've been a good luck charm so far. <laughs> thank you good uh well today's a fun one um and we kind of went over some of the again we're kind of still on the listing side of things and um you know carlos has been to this one before and um you and cam were kind of in the training the week before last about the listing stuff but um this is about winning the listing while you're there kind of like what your post listing kind of jobs are and, and things like that so we'll we'll kind of roll through this today um this is definitely the fun stuff. I mean, of, of actually getting them to sign with you, and um, obviously your your goal is to to take listings. So this is this is a good one. So um, these are good tips for for winning and securing and, and negotiating while you're there. Um, so I think last week we talked kind of about the, the pre listing information. You know, getting your comps together, um, getting you know scheduling the appointment and and all that meeting. And today it's more about being at the meeting and, and getting the listing itself. I think we talked about this before. You guys, everyone on here has their listing presentation put together now. I'm still working on mine. Gotcha. Get it, get it together. I, I actually have mine like printed out as well, like in a book, so it can people can flip through it if they want to. But I, again, 99% of the time it's on my iPad. But I do, I do have it printed out and in my car just just in case people wanna wanna see it. Um, and it looks good. Um, so conducting the, the listing presentation, um, I mean, this is kind of the different steps, right? You're greeting them, um, the home tour, the presentation, pricing, and then closing and asking for the paperwork. Um, I, I always kind of have my four steps is, is rapport, presentation, price, close, right? Um, so that's kind of the, the, the way that I do it. So it's, it's, it's rapport first every single time um and then then you go into presentation and you know when you get done with your presentation and you feel like we're the right company to market your house do you feel like i'm the right person to sell your house and you're getting those yeses and then you move on to your price and and when i say price i mean what you what you want to list house at not not necessarily your commissions right um so you know a lot of agents when they first walk in you know, they're getting bamboozled by the the sell like how, what's your commission and how much you want this my house for right you want to you want to save those nuggets for as as long as you can right so just just it's rapport presentation price and the close 
So that price is one of the last things that you want to give them because um, it gives you time to build build their trust, get them to like you, and build your value, more importantly, right? So if you're walking in and they're asking you for your commission, you say 6%, right? You, you've, you've shown them nothing, right? So the easy conversation is, well, I don't even want to talk to you, wasting your time, go ahead and leave, versus if you go there and build the value of what you do, what the company does, and to get them to like you, when it's 6% later, there's no conversation about it, right? So um, how, when do I see you, it, how do you navigate that part of the conversation when they're like, hey, I just want to know the price and the commission and you haven't even built your rapport yet? Like, how do you kind of, what what do you say to like, hold on to that? You know. Yeah, I mean, your your first your first step is getting inside the house, right? So no matter no matter what no matter what they greet me with the front door, again, I usually talk to them before I got out there. But it, it's you know, let me take a quick tour of the house. You want to show me around, and then that's 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 my time to start building that rapport. As as they're showing me, you know, the family room with the pictures on the wall, and they're showing me their the man cave downstairs with a Cowboys you know poster, and you know they're showing me that the outside area and and whatever. Um, I got to see the, the 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 house first, and I do that every single time, no matter no matter what they say, right? You'll have people that come in and like they've got the chair pulled out for you, the dining room table. As soon as you walk in, yep. and I just put my notebook there, and I'm like, all right, well, show me around. And I'm, I I would never sit down at the table right away because you you have you have you've built nothing, right? Yeah. Um, so it really is just about let me let me take a look around. Like, listen, I I put a lot of stuff together for you. Um, we're gonna go over all that. I'd love to see the house first so I can make sure that I'm talking about the right stuff. And then that's going to let you, you know, kind of go from there. Um, and the, the report part is, it, it is what it is. There's no, it's not five minutes. It's not 10 minutes. It's not an hour. It just, it is, it's as long as you can make it last and be comfortable and, and fun. Um, and then when that ends, um, it's the, the presentation part. And, you know, you guys are going to go through your presentation. There's a couple of slides in here that, that I think are the most important slides in the presentation that we'll get to in a minute. Um, once you deliver the presentation, then it's okay. Let's talk about price. How much you want to sell your house for, right? Um, and, and that's the that's the the fun part of it as well, right? Because then they're going to give you, well, this is what I want for the house, right? Um, and if their number is higher than what you thought coming in, right? Because you guys are obviously going to have a price range in mind before you go out there. Um, you, know, you should have obviously done your research before you got there. So if you get there and the house is an immaculate place and you think it's worth 399 um and they're telling you 450 right then you're you're pulling your comps out and you're going through price strategies and and the comps and getting them to hopefully come down to what your what your number is and then once you agree agree on price then you're you're asking for the business which is very intimidating for a, a lot of new new agents but um it's definitely something that you have to do and that you deserve by that by that point in time after all that we've talked about for the last you know 11 weeks by the time you get to the point where you've got them to like you you've gone over your presentation you've gone over the price um for, for me it's more of a it's a, just kind of the obvious conclusion right like we're we're going to work together and i'm not even really asking you i'm just i need you to sign here right because i've i've done everything and usually they would just start signing versus um me having to awkwardly ask them, okay, well, do you want to list your house? Do you want to sign all these 30 pages of paperwork? Um, again, I felt out a lot of the paperwork before I got there and it's more of, here it is, let's just get started. And a lot of people appreciate that, right? They don't want to have to make that decision. They don't want, they want someone that's a go-getter that's just going to, you know, take control of the situation. So uh, people appreciate that. Um, so as far as the, the presentation and stuff, Obviously, you want to sell yourself in the company first, um, lead with value to, to what you bring and and help the seller think like a buyer, which is which is super important, right? Because everyone wants to sell for the most amount of money. When you ask them, like, would you if you were a buyer, you would look at this neighborhood, how much would you pay for this house? And that usually will get you a completely different answer, right? Um, and if they think that the price that they're thinking in their head is too high, you better believe the buyers are gonna think that, right? Um Pricing strategies, um, discuss months of inventory, present competition. Um, I mean, Tony, like the house you were at this weekend, right? I mean, that was a very hard house to comp just because there's nothing quite like it, right? I mean, price per square foot is it's it's higher than other stuff in the area, 
Um, but for quality point, I mean, it's there's nothing else like it, right? So it's a, you know, some some houses are going to be very hard to comp. Um, so you just have to kind of do do your best with what you have. But for the most part, your average house is going to be you know you're going to have the competition around its price per square foot around the same thing, and can put you guys in a good. I guess ballpark of where where it can be priced. So this is in everyone's listing presentation, right? This this page right here. So can you guys see my mouse? Can you guys see my mouse? Okay. Um, so this is this area is what you want to shoot for, right? Um, when when it comes to pricing their house, right? So basically, what you want to tell them is is you know, this this survey was done by the National Association of Realtors. It says that when you price your house at fair market value, you're going to get 60% of the buyers in that current buyer pool, right, looking at the house. And that is a very ideal number because that's going to give us five to seven showings a week, and that's going to get your house sold correctly, right? And what's crazy is if you are just 10% higher than market value, that number drops in half, Right. So you go from 30, 60% of the buyers that are they're looking at your house down to 30, right? So we're cutting our numbers in half by overpricing our house, right? And once you get to 15%, that number goes down drastically, right? We're only getting 10% of the buyers in the buyer's pool. I'm very good at what I what I do, but I probably can't even sell your house, right? You're gonna get one showing every six months, right? You it it you wanna be here. On the opposite side, we can underprice your house. Right, we could underprice it by ten percent and get seventy-five percent. We can underprice it by fifteen percent and get ninety. I don't think we need to do that with your house, but I think putting it right at market value and getting sixty percent of the target audience is going to sell your house very quickly, right? Um, and that's a that's a slide that you know you're doing in your listing presentation before you get to price, right? So when you spend time with them on this slide and talk about how important it is to price your house correctly. When you get to the next phase and ask them how much they want to sell their house for, hopefully they're not going to be like, I still want 450, right? Hopefully they're going to realize that, you know, whatever your price of 400 is more of a reasonable number. But if you if you do this correctly, you're doing this to set you up for your, the next stage, which is pricing. Does that make sense? So the next thing is, is time. Um, so... Tony, when you see a house on the market with days on the market, what does that mean to you? If it's not under contract within the first week, it starts depreciating. Like there's a higher chance that harder to find the, the right buyer or that there's something with the house that's very unique that's like specifically targeted to a certain like age group or season in life like this house was because this house has been on the market for a while. Right. right. So the the longer it's on the market, the harder it is to sell, basically. Yeah. So th this is this is a great a great chart. So this this shows that you you really have you know two three four weeks of peak time before that energy excitement enthusiasm for that house is out the window. Right. Doesn't mean you can't sell it, but the value goes down. Right. And that's that's what you want to that's what you want to show people is that you have a lot of time. So when you're looking at this last slide. If we price it correctly, it's going to sell faster, and faster means more money, right? Um, and what you will have a lot of people tell you is that I'm not in a hurry. I love that. Everyone says that. Oh, I'm not in a hurry to sell. Every second that your house is on the market, you are in a hurry, right? So I always laugh when they say that. I said, I'm going to show you something in a minute. And, and usually, remember, you're not in a hurry to sell. I get that, but realistically, you are, you've got about two to three weeks of peak peak time for your money, right? So when you show them that, um, it, it, during COVID, this was here, right? This was like two to three days. If you weren't getting offers, like something's wrong, right? Like it, it changes. So we're probably back to, this is probably pretty normal right now um, where this graph is, but that's what you want to show them is you want to price it correctly to start with. And then you have a couple weeks of, of peak activity. So, um, that also helps you set up for price reductions, right? So when you show them that, hey, we have only a couple of weeks, if we're not getting that attention in that first 10 days, let's drop it, right? Um, so these these two slides are super, super beneficial. Um, spend some time on these, come up with some you know, talking points and questions you can ask. Um, 
when you're with them and and it'll help you when you get to actually pricing the house. Ask for the listing. Karen, is this part fun for you? I can't hear you, but. Yes, it is. I do love asking questions. I, I also have had a few conversations with them prior to getting into the house. So I really know the pulse of what they want to do. And I've asked them questions in my in my probably my second or third phone call with them because I I unlike you have to you know I'm not able to just call and say I'll be there in an hour. Usually people need a little lead time, so I do try to encourage conversation during my phone calls to them. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean whatever works. I I I, I typically set for whatever I whatever I'm calling today. I, tomorrow's my usually my target date. Um, sometimes if I call early in the morning, I'll set something for this evening, but typically, typically what I'm calling for is, is, you know, Hey, does this time tomorrow work for you? Uh, I can be there tomorrow at uh, nine 30. Um, you know, I'm usually asking for a specific time. So I have time to, to do all my stuff and, and work in my schedule. <coughs> um, yeah. And if you're getting more information out of them, out of them over the phone, then, th then that's great. I tend to give them less information over the phone because everyone else is already calling them and talking to them and hey i can do four percent i can list your house for 450 i'll do a one week listing like they're giving them all this stuff so me giving them my information well i'm going to list your house at 380 and i'm going to charge you six percent um you know it's not going to go well over the phone right but when i get out there and i sell myself and what i do they're still going to sign up with me every time and but how do you, Brian, thing. how do you divert if you know that other people are calling and saying, I'll do four and a half, I'll do three, I'll do one. How do you divert that conversation to how do you how do you move it from what they're that's why I don't that's why I don't bring it up over the phone. That's why I never talk pricing or rates or, or over the phone, um, because that's, you know, that's for for I don't say weaker agents, but for other agents, that's that's what they sell on is is discounting, right? And that's that's a problem. So that's why I, I never get into that over the phone. You know, hey, hey, this is Brian. I'd love to come out and see the house tomorrow. And it, it's very, very short. Because I know when I get out there, believe it or not, the smile will turn them around and I can I can work my way in and 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 earn what I, I deserve. Um, but giving that stuff up over the phone is is very tough. you I mean it because the only thing you can do over the phone is is come down and all right, well, I'll if you let me come out, maybe I can do five, right? Like that's the only thing you can negotiate, right? Uh, versus if I just get out there, because a lot of people, they don't want to drive out there. They want to be lazy and they just, they want to do everything over the phone. And so they, they know that they've got to sell versus I don't care where you are. If you're in Hickory, you let me come out there in two hours, I'm on the way, right? And then we'll figure it out when I get there. Um, I like that approach. That, that approach has been very successful for me, but that's that's my way around it is, is when every time I get out there, it's rapport, presentation, price, and close, right? And that that never deviates. Um, though it it's it, honestly when I get down to the end, we're we're not even talking. I mean, they don't even care that it's six percent, right? Like they 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 know that I'm the right guy. Um, and every and understand that every single person that you talk to, Karen, somebody has told them four percent, or they'll list it for a hundred thousand over, right? Every time. So I don't even bring that up because I I know that they have that, right? I go to people's house and they got flyers and they got stuff written down at, at 2% and 1%. And it doesn't, it doesn't phase me a bit. I just go on and do what I got to do. And when they see my confidence and they see my listening presentation and my knowledge about the industry, that's all that matters. So the, the presentation, if you're, if you're newer on the listing side, will get you through everything. Um, I mean, it, my, my very first listing appointment I ever went to, I signed it. And it, it's, it's, I didn't know anything about houses or anything. I went out there and I just followed the listing presentation, the steps, build a rapport, do the listing presentation, go over the price, get them to sign. Um, so if you're, if you're relying on that stuff, all the other stuff, all the other tools that need to be in your tool bag will come with time. Um, you can go out and take a, I mean, Tanya, you can go out and sign a listing today by just doing your presentation and knowing the comps, right? Um, even though you've never signed a listing. So, you know, don't, don't feel like just because you haven't done it that you can't, um, you just make sure that you rely on the, on the, the fundamentals. And then, you know, I see a lot of agents, once they get more confidence and they sign more listings, they get away from their presentation, right? And then you see them stop taking listings, right? 
at the end of the day, you can just keep it simple. Rapport, presentation, price, close. And you can take listens all day, every day, right? So just remember that. So, you, you know, just because you haven't done it before doesn't mean you can't literally go out there and, and do it today. Reviewed motivations, timing, concerns. Um, again, we, I think we talked about this before, but kind of find out what their hot button is. When I'm when I'm walking them through and we're going to the house, I always ask them, this is a beautiful house. Why the heck are you selling this, right? And I ask them like that because they're going to give me their genuine answer, right? Um, and that hot button, I'm just going to put it in my pocket and hold it for later, right? And that's 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 the reason their motivation for selling, right? The the opposite happens when you've you've been there for an hour, you've gone over everything, and you never ask that question in the beginning. Is all right, Karen. Thanks for coming out. I'll call you in a week, right? Because if you if you don't get that motivation in the beginning, they're not going to tell you at the end. This is why I want to sell. I need to sell. Just say, ah, I'm not in a hurry right now. I'm going to think about it for a couple of weeks. I'll get back with you, right? Um, so it's very 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 important that you find out what their motivation is is up front. Um, and if it happens to be over the phone, Karen, that's that's great too. Uh, but make sure you're asking that very early on, so you can kind of hold your feet to the fire of like their their motivation for selling. If that makes sense. Discuss their qualifications, marketing field buyers. Are they are they are they buying? Are they moving out of state? Um, what's their what's their timing? Um, and I understand a lot of people on the timing is is really going to be. I'd like to sell in the next three to six months. Well, for, for us, does that mean, should I come back in three months? Does that mean you want to wait till next year? For me, it's, I can't predict the future. I know right now is a good time to sell. Let's put it on the market and see if we get offers we like now, right? Um, and that's kind of always my my answer is because I, I can't predict the future. You know, things, things can always change. Um, the sooner we get on the market, better it's going to be, right? So when you get out there and explain to them, you know, what's going on in the industry, that now is a good time to put it up. And, you know, worst case scenario, we we list it. We don't get the offers we like. We can withdraw it and, and put it back up again later. But let's, let's at least get you live and get sort of entertaining offers. Secure agreements on best price. Um, that's what we're kind of talking about right now. Ask for the business. Um, again, I mentioned this earlier. Sellers are looking for a go-getter, someone that can just know that they can do the job right uh so when i'm when i'm there i'm literally i mean 10 minutes in like i noticed you don't really use your front door as this back door place where we can put the lockbox you're just sliding a little stuff like that in right and they're like oh yeah that, that's actually a good idea you know uh, this this back porch is beautiful this is gonna look great in drone shots uh by the way it's rainy this, this weekend but probably monday or tuesday i can have my photographer out what do you think about that right now, I'm just slowly getting them to to realize like they're, they're just kind of buying into me as we go. Um, so when I get down to the end and ask for the business, like, again, it's more of just a sign here type thing, right? Um, it, it's how I do it. And, and again, the awkwardness of asking is, you know, it can be tough, right? Like, do you want to, I mean, it, you know, just remember when you're in high school and ask someone to the school dance, right? It's, it's nerve wracking, right? You know, just... When you rather a, a guy or a girl comes say, hey, like we're going out Friday night, I'm picking you up at eight, right? Wouldn't that be more fun? Wouldn't that be easier for you? Um, yeah, it's kind of the same thing with homeowners. When you got someone, you got a stranger in your house, they're asking these questions. The the natural reaction for humans to be like, we're going to talk it over, we'll get back with you, right? Versus you just say, hey, look, I like you. If you look at someone in the face and say that, you know what they're going to say? Yeah, I like you do. This has been fun. I'd like to work with you guys. We're going to go ahead and get started. I need you to sign right here and we'll get you live next week. And, and just kind of taking control of it. And you'll find that either A, they will start signing or B, they'll give you what objection they have. Well, I can't go live next week because my, my mother-in-law is coming to town. Okay, that's fine. You want to try the week afterwards? We can set a tentative date for the 20th. How's that sound, right? And then, you know, if they have objections, they'll give them to you, Right. That that's the way that I do it, and I've I've found a lot of success. Um, complete the the listing paperwork, obtain the signatures. You know, we talked about the listing documents we needed. Uh, I think two weeks ago. Um, hey Brian, I have a question. Yes. So if okay, let's say that we go live on a listing, but we're not getting the offers that they like, and we take the listing down, right? 
And mm -hmm. when it gets put up in a, in a month or two, they want to relist it. Is that um, clock going to restart or is it still going to appear that it was already listed before or like? The, the days will start again. So it feels like if you had on the market for like 19 days and then you withdraw it, like it, those 19 days stop. When you put it back up, it'll go back to 2021. 20, like it'll. Okay. Yeah. So it's what not would be a good time? What would be a good time to stop? Like, let's say they're getting offers, but they're, yeah. I mean, ideal, ideally never, right? Like, like yeah. just like that one at Huntsville that we did, right? Like, I mean, that that was a, another, I mean, both, both the list, both the open houses you've done for me have been, you know, just unique, uh, not oddball, but just, just houses of normally wouldn't have to do an open house on, but uh, I mean, that one was priced too high, but she wasn't taking it off. Um, she was just waiting for that perfect out of town person to come and buy it, which, which is what happened. Um, taking it off was, is, wasn't the right answer for her because she was, she's paying the mortgage on it. She needs it. She needs it sold. Right. So some, some situations, it, I tell my client that because it, genuinely it, it, anybody can withdraw their, their listing anytime they want. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just, that's just in the contract. You can, you can withdraw it anytime that they want. For whatever reason, right? There's a death in the family, you lose your job, you're not getting the offers you want, whatever the case may be, you can your client can withdraw at any at any moment that they want to. Um, but it's a good way of letting the the client know that they're in control, right? Say, okay. look, if you're not happy with the situation for not getting the showings and you want to withdraw, we can't, right? Okay. Um, and that's a that's another good thing to me. I, I I always like to put my clients in six months listings, right? And you know what they'll say? Well, why six months? Because we might have to take it out to market for some reason. I don't. I don't really know, right? Or what if we get under contract and it falls through? We have to go back live again, right? Um, well, six months is a long time. Well, you can always withdraw at any time you want, right? But if you're going to sell, I need to make sure that I'm covered, right? Um, and that's that's kind of my my work around that is I need six months just just in case. I mean, I, I think that your house is gorgeous. It's going to sell in two or three weeks. But things change, right? Um, maybe you get COVID for three weeks, and I, I can't show the house for a couple weeks, right? Um, you know, things things change. So, yeah, I know that that helps at all, but yeah, I do this a lot. Um, I tend to fill out as much much of the paperwork in advance as I can, right? So I have I have a lot of it kind of ready to go. Um, it, it's so easy to change electronically. I mean, if I think that I should list house at 399, I'm going to have 399 in there. I'm going to have a live date of next Friday. I'm going to have 6% in there. I'm going to have, you know, basically everything in there. And then, you know, the only things would change is, you know, maybe, maybe the price change very rarely, but maybe the commission changes, maybe, maybe the live date obviously changes. Um, obviously the property disclosures is, is often going to change, right? Um, but all that stuff is very, very quick to change. But if you have that folder of all the paperwork ready, so if it's an older house, like, all right, I've already got my lead-based paint in there, right? I've already got all that stuff that needs for them. Their name's already on all the documents. All that stuff is ready to go. So when, when I'm there, it's not me starting from scratch and me fumbling around because that's awkward, right? That that makes the whole, hey, do you want a list? Uh, give me 15 minutes. Do you have Wi-Fi, by the, by the way? Let me just... Uh, yeah, shoot me an email tonight. I'll call you next week is what you're going to get when that happens, right? So being being prepared, there's there's a you know a, a, a small little window of where things are not not weird. And I, I was training this new agent one time um, and we were, I don't know, like, probably like Lenore, somewhere like up in that area. And it was her first day. She just got a license and I was training her and phenomenal rapport. We were there for like over an hour before we even started. Crushed the listing presentation. We got to the price and this is before, you know, I had you know, electronic documents all on the iPad and everything. this is when you had a stack of paperwork and I opened my folder and they're ready to sign and it wasn't in my notebook. And the two owners just looked at me within probably two to three seconds and it felt like 20 minutes to me. They're like, no big deal. Shoot me an email. Never heard from them again. And it was that like they were ready. They, were, they literally had their pens in their hand ready to sign, and I just, I just wasn't prepared. And I, I, I can never get back in that door. Um, it haunts me to this day. <laughs> I was so upset and sad. 
Um, but it was a good learning lesson for, for myself, but also for her. I was like, you, you see how delicate it is. It, it, it's, it's crazy, right? So you have to take advantage of, of when they're ready and, and be prepared, right? So um, you know, you'll see a lot of agents, hey, I went on five appointments and they just weren't ready yet. It's, they don't know what they're doing. A lot of that's on you, you know? So you know, understand that if you're not, if you're going on a lot of listing appointments, you're not getting them. You know, what, what could you do differently to make that transition easier and smoother and make them feel more comfortable that you're the right person? Um, yes. Write in automatic price reductions. Um, definitely do that if, you, if you're if you having to take the listing slightly higher than you want to, right? Um, so ideally, say we want to list house at 399 and they agree on 399. That's great. But if they're like, hey, I'm starting this thing at 4099. I don't care, right? You don't want to walk away from that, right? Because you're, you know, that's less than 5%. Like, take that listing to say, hey, look, let's go ahead and write in uh, a price reduction. If in one week we go live and we don't have the offers or the traction we like, you're going to go and reduce it to 399. Is that fair? You get to start at your price. I get built in <laughs> reduction so we don't have to arm wrestle in a week. And you should all laugh when you say that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way of letting them get a win. But also, you you obviously get the listing, right? Explain time versus price, right? And that's that's in your listing presentation, and that's it's such a such a big slide. You should be showing that pretty much every every single time. Make the seller part of the team, right? So, um, when you get a listing, you know and they live in the house, what do you have to do every time you get a showing request? You ask them, right? Yeah, so just let them know, like, hey, like when we get a showing, I'm gonna shoot you a text, right? I'm not gonna call you every time and don't don't, don't get in the habit of doing that and um, having a 20 minute conversation. Be like, oh, who's a buyer? Is it husband or wife? What are they like? Where are they moving from? You know, yes or no, right? You don't know anything about the buyers. It's yes or no, can you do it? And and I let them know, like, don't be declining my, my showings, right? Unless there's something, if there's a reason for you to decline it, decline it. But like, if I say 345, don't text me back, say no, can they do 351? And you will have people that do that. It's yes or no, right? If you want to sell your house and say yes, right? Um, but, but just let them know that, hey, like, we're going to work together. We're going to get these showings scheduled. In showing time, you can set it up where your seller gets to say yes or no themselves. And, and sometimes I do do that. Um, that's up to you. That's up to your client. Sometimes your client likes to be able to click yes and, and accept the, the showing. Um, when would you not have to ask your seller about a showing? When it is vacant. Yeah. I like to ask you outside of it, right? I mean, we had three other showings this weekend on that house and I just get an email and a text saying showing confirmed for Sunday too, right? And I don't have to do anything about it. Um, and I usually let my seller know every couple of days, like, Hey, we had four showings in the last, last week. Right. But you want to make sure that you're giving them the, the feedback as well. And again, you know, a lot of times, you know, the people's biggest complaints about their previous agent was they never got any feedback. So give it to them. And I, I usually give it to them pretty raw, unless it's just something like super nasty, which some agents leave nasty stuff, but I usually give it to them pretty well. I usually just copy and paste it. That way it's not me writing it. So hey, this is just heads up. We got three, three feedbacks. One just not interested. One likes the house, but they're just early in the process. And this other one said that um, the house seems like it's overpriced because the floor is wobbly. And just give it to them. Just let them, you know, digest it. And it's it's a good way if you're not getting the offers that you want and when they're, they're seeing some of the feedback is negative it, it it's an easy way for the for you to potentially do a price reduction if you need to right um because the, the feedback it is what it is right we don't control it they don't control it um it's it's the buyers who, who dictate all that um again contact showing agents for feedback um you know, showing time is great. It sets it up and a lot of agents will give their feedback, um, but some of them don't, right? And if it's, if someone's super interested, um, like that lady from the other house, honey, she's, she's called me and she's been texting me back and forth, right? So that's, that one's easy to get feedback from because they're reaching out, right? 
And I, I know if, if someone's reached out to me prior to a showing, that means they're probably pretty interested, right? Definitely reach out with those people, right? Um, you should be reaching out to everyone if they're not doing the showing time, but the people that have expressed interest, call them back, right? Figure out what's going on. And, and there's there's been so many times where I've called somebody and they had a question about the house and they were just going to go to another house instead of, yeah, the HOA actually covers the, the yard. Like, oh my God, well, they just, they didn't want to have to mow that. So they just weren't going to put an offer. I'm like, oh my God, if I wouldn't have called you, you wouldn't have put an offer, right? Like, so it's not just, a, it's just the dumbest stuff. So call them and figure out what they're, what it is. Maybe they say, hey, if, if on that same house, I need that somebody wants that back tree cut down and they, they didn't even ask about it. I was like, well, well, let me ask my seller. And I called and said, hey, like, I've got a couple that wants to put a hot tub in the backyard, but they want to know if that tree will come down. And he checked with HOA and said, yeah, right. So following up is, is going to be crucial for getting more offers. An offer arrives. So it is easy when you get a text um, to say that we have an offer coming in uh, beforehand. Sometimes that's okay, but sometimes that it, it, you put your foot in your mouth and you don't get that offer. They change their mind and they see three other houses before and they don't get it. Um, that's up to you how you handle that. You know, sometimes I tell people, hey, we have two potential offers coming in. We don't have them yet, but we have two people that have said that they might be putting in offers, right? Um, and usually I think that's okay. But if you tell someone that we have an offer coming in and we'll have it by this afternoon, 100%, Guess what's going to happen when you're trying to eat dinner? Is you're going to be blown up. Hey, where's that offer at? Why aren't you giving it to me? Oh my God, the offer's low, right? Is that why you're not sharing it? You're going to get blown up. Um, so be be careful how you how you handle that. Would you say like there's people that are showing high interest? They haven't submitted an offer, but there's definitely. For sure. I mean, you you definitely want to keep them excited, right? You want to you want to keep them excited and engaged, um, especially if they're if they're having a good traction. Um, just for, for example, on that house, it's been on the market for a while, but it's consistently getting showings every week. Um, the open house has been going well. So I'm, I'm, it's, it's easy because I'm able to give him good, good feedback. If we went a week with no showings, I tell him, like, hey, we had, no, we, we had nothing going on this week. Um, and we've been finally getting this guy dis discussing doing a price reduction, right? So that's, that's in the works. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, it's, if it's good feedback, obviously give it to him, keep them, keep them excited. Um, if it's not great, I mean, sometimes you just have to not sugarcoat it, but give it to them in a, in a nice way. But, um, yeah, you want to, you want to give it all to them. All right. So you've got, you've got the offer again, um, ne negotiating the offers. It, it's, it's when I, when I get an offer in my hand, Every offer is a good offer, right? Um, and presenting presenting the offer is paramount to you getting offers accepted, right? Um, I've got two offers in my email right now on two different properties. Um, one of them is less. We have it listed at two forty nine. It's an offer for two twenty four, right? So it's it's less, right? Um, instead of me saying. Tiffany, listen, this offer sucks. Like we should counter it. Like, let me give you, let me tell you what it's about. I do, I present my offer the same way every single time. All right, I got great news. We've got an offer in writing, right? So first offer, you ready? I get them excited and say, look, they're going to close um, May 7th. They're going to put $8,000 due diligence down. Um, uh, only a 10 day due diligence period. They're conventional financing. And the offer is 224K. That's it. I zip up. Um, I don't want to make that decision for them. Because sometimes, you know what? We haven't, it's, it's, our, it's the only offer that we've gotten. It's been on the market for eight days now. Like, honestly, I've been happy with 230. Let's, let's just accept it. Or let's counter back at 229, right? You never know. But if you, if you make that decision for them, that it's not good because you're the expert, one million percent of the time, they will go in that direction, right? If you say, "Hey, look, this is a this is a trash offer. I didn't want to tell you about it. it's two twenty four, right?" Even if they want to accept it, they're not going to, right? Present the facts. Be excited that they have an offer in writing. Deliver the number, and then just be quiet, and then listen to what they say.
And it's the same same thing on the other side. Um, and Karen, you've done a lot on the buyer side, right? So when you when you get a counter back, I mean, it's the same thing, right? If you put a counter in for 224 and they counter back at 240, hey, congratulations. They want to work with us. They like our offer. They have a counter. This is what it is. It's 240. And then I just zip up and let them let them take it as, you know, let them say, you know what? I thought they were going to ask for full price. You know what? We'll do that, right? Or maybe we have to counter again, but let them decide for themselves. Um because even, even though they tell you when you try to take the listing, they would never take a dollar less than 250 or whatever the case is, having an offer in writing is a whole different ballgame. Close the sale. Um, you guys don't need to hire a transaction coordinator. At, at least for your first couple of deals, you should be doing everything yourself. You need to know, Karen shaking her head, yes. You need to know all the ins and outs. Like you need to, you need to learn that process. So um dealing with the attorneys and getting the, you know, the the buyer and seller info sheets and all this stuff you you need to be doing that on your own uh, i don't even think we allow mentees to to do transaction coordinators uh in your first five deals so be be prepared for that that's uh it's it, it's good um you you need to you need to know that communicate with your clients again there, there shouldn't there should never be a week that you're not talking to your clients whether you're in the showing process whether you're under contract whether you're you know, two weeks from close and you're already past due diligence, you should be talking to them every single week, right? Um, sometimes a couple of times a week, right? Um, when you're not hearing from them and you get closer to close, guess what they see when they see that final settlement statement with your commission? Uh, you know what? Karen hasn't talked to me in 10 days. I, you know what? I don't think she deserves $13,000, right? People are funny. They can be your best friend. And can I tell you, people can be your absolute best friend. And then when it comes down to the money, things change, right? So A, take it with a grain of salt, right? Understand that it happens to everybody, the best agents, right? Everybody gets funny when it comes to seeing how much money is coming out and going towards their agent. But if you are constantly communicating with them and all your stuff is tracked in your CRM, I mean, I, I've had people complain and I have literally 600 text messages in my CRM. And I can track them all, right? Every email, every phone call, right? So the better you guys are communi communicating and putting notes in, um, it 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 covers you, right? Um, but yeah, not communicating with them is going to give them any any reason to not be happy with you. Uh, and you might say, hey, I don't I don't really care as long as it closes. At the end of the day, like your bread and butter from real estate is going to come in your next couple of years when you can call this client back and get referrals, right? So. You always want to make sure that everyone is as is, is happy as possible. And you can make everyone happy, unfortunately, but if you can, just go the extra, go the extra mile. Thank you, gift, card. Um, obviously, ask for feedback. Um, ask for them to write a review. Uh, that is super helpful. Share those reviews on your social media. Um, honestly, I get I get more calls and stuff like that from my reviews than I do listing a million dollar house a review of any house, right? When somebody says, Brown was amazing to work with. When I post that, I get more comments and and I've gotten more leads from that than I have anything else. So getting getting good feedback is is huge. Here's that CRM word again. Um, yeah, so set, set your stuff up. So, I mean, obviously, you know, in your CRM, you wanna make sure that you're setting tasks and reminders to call potential potential clients but you also need to be doing the same thing for people that you've already worked with. Um, and that, that again, is going to help you get business long-term. So. Any questions, comments, concerns? Antonio, I know you, you haven't been on a listing appointment before, but if you ever want to run one, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to, to tag along with me. Um, yeah, so it's it's fun to see it in in person. Um, but yeah, if you ever if you ever want to do that, just just let me know. Um, so yeah, I like shadow you on a listing appointment. Is that what it mm -hmm. is? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you have any coming up this week? Uh, I'm, I, I don't have any right now, but as soon as we get off here, I'm going to probably set a couple, hopefully. So hopefully. Well, let me know. Let me know. I'll be, yeah. I'll, I'll plan accordingly. I, okay. this yeah. week, I'm, I'm this week. So my tasks for myself is doing, um, like a mock, um, offer 
mock listing agreement, you know, and submitting that to Diana. And nice. then I got my um, South Carolina license. So I'll be submitting all my stuff for the South Carolina commission. I know. Congrats on passing that. Yeah. So that's exciting as well. So that's, yeah, on my to-do list yeah. this week. Good. And Good. if there's any open house coming up, I'm going to post it on, on um, Facebook. I want to run another open house this weekend. Maybe you guys might call a couple for so why owners today. Huh? Maybe, maybe. Huh? 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 All right. Um, well, good. Well, thanks for jumping on. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, Tanya Carlos, and uh, I'll be around all week. And if I get a listing appointment, I will uh, let you know. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. Bye.